Greetings and welcome to this lecture on why a class on popular culture. Uh, this is part of a mini-series on what is popular culture, which is part of a course popular culture in the US. So why a class on popular culture? It's a really good question and it's a question I, I sometimes run up against when I'm talking about this course. And so the way I break it down to people is I usually start off by saying, well, first, we're immersed in popular culture. It surrounds us. It's everywhere. It's embedded in so many things that we do day to day or things that we're exposed to, right? We pass by thousands of ads in a given day or are exposed to thousands of ads in a given day. And that's part of popular culture, uh, the ways in which the ads appeal to our identity, to our interest and things like that. Uh, so that, that's one of the reasons. Another is that we're confused about popular culture. Uh, and what I mean by this is we don't always really understand that that's what we're participating in, and we don't always understand you know, what is its value. Uh, we often misvalue it. We often think of it as valueless, uh, even though you know, what we talk about today as popular culture 50 years from now may be seen as high culture. Uh, great examples of that are, of course, Shakespeare. Charles Dickens, The Beatles, these are all people or, or these are all uh, individuals who their work at one time was considered popular and they're therefore considered irrelevant or people found it less than important. It wasn't that big culture that we talk about, uh, and yet now it is. So I think one of the things we always have to be aware of is that any number of things that we find as popular culture could become a you know a permanent mainstay of culture in the future and that pop popular culture is interdisciplinary um, and what I mean that by that is it's really it's a it's a thing to focus on through several different lenses uh, interdisciplinary studies is an approach in which you look at a subject matter in this case popular culture through different lenses so we'll be looking at it through history through critical studies through uh, sociology psychology environmental studies you know lots of different angles to think about the subject matter and when we do that we get a very different picture than if we just looked at it in one particular way so for instance some people might just look at popular culture through economics which is an interesting way of looking at popular culture but it doesn't give you as big a view and it doesn't give allow for you to look at this subject and take that, those skills of looking in different ways and apply it to other subjects. Uh, and I think one thing people often under understate or don't think about is studying popular culture requires complex thought. It requires you as the student to really push past biases and things you assume, particularly about popular culture you're not interested in. And this is something that's been even hard for myself over the years, you know, to to do that because we have our biases. You know, I'm not a big sports person and so I can very easily be critical of sports, but that's not really what popular culture studies is per se it's trying to understand it um, and so that's something in my own personal quest I've had to do over the years and I you know just like you will with certain subjects I, I sometimes a little more challenging for me uh, but it requires complex thoughts it's not just judging it's really trying to get in and understand the complexity of relationships and thoughts that are going on in the people involved in the particular arena of popular culture so with that in mind, I think it's probably useful to talk about what do we mean by popular culture. And so let's first talk about popular. Uh, and we know there, you know, we, we have three types of popular that we most, that most people understand when we use the word popular. The first is inferiority due to its availability. Right? When we talk about, oh, that's popular, um, we sometimes, it, there's often a hint of inferiority because it's so widely available. And a good example of that is the mass market paperback. I would even say cell phones today are popular, but we also see them as an element of inferior, or we see that because they're so prolific, so abundant, um, at least in this culture, 
we also don't value them as much you know i think back when we first when cell phones were first coming out people were very protected of of them now and today it's i would say not as much you know people are more than comfortable or it's not the end of the world when they drop them or you know are likely to use them in ways that you wouldn't um, and so there's an element of treating it inferior because it's so available mass paperbacks are the same way uh, intentionally seeking attention so when we think of popular we think of somebody that is you know trying to grab our attention and you know the best example of that are celebrities um, you know people that will go on reality TV shows there's they're seeking an element of popularity um, they're seeking to be popular in this way and then something that is just liked by a lot of people and a great example of that and I'll talk about um, in one of the other uh, mini lectures in this this series is coffee right lots of people like coffee and so it is popular in that regard the other thing we have to deal with here is culture and we tend to have two big concepts around what culture is the first is something that's hot a highly valued representation of a person's culture you know a good example of that is the pyramids or in the United States you know it could be Mount Rushmore it could be uh, the the Washington Monument it could be the the statue of, of Lincoln in Washington DC the Twin Towers right these are these represent something about our culture and so we often think of them as great works um, so they can be physical objects as I've pointed out but they could also be you know other types of objects um, they could be you know famous films right if you look at a, a film like uh, Citizen Kane which is considered you know one of the best films ever made right that's a that's a big example that's a high cultural object but then we also have culture as we mean as the traditions, artifacts, and perceptions created by people who generally share a geographic region of the world. So these are the things that we produce um, that we consider part and parcel of our culture. And so this is where popular culture starts to blur with just general cultures because so many of these things could also be considered popular. Um, that when we look at traditions, artifacts, and perceptions, you know, we're starting to look in the way in which people conduct and run their everyday lives. And so this is where culture starts to dovetail with popular culture. Especially when we know that a lot of the things that the, the mass population does may eventually become what we consider part of high culture or at least part of our cultural norms. A great example of that is just the ways in which men and women relate in this culture that may be different from other cultures. That's part of our culture um, but it isn't all the way things are always done. It slowly became and so initially it was part of how popular culture may have displayed or represented relationships and some of that has changed as a result. So the big thing to understand is that popular culture pulls all of this together um, which can make it hard to fully understand because there's a lot of gray areas like is that just high culture or is that popular culture and at what point does something that's popular become high culture and what what point does something that's high culture become popular culture when Shakespeare is made into a movie is it now popular culture or is it still high culture does it matter who directs it and how it's produced so these are things we'll question these are things we'll tackle um, as we go into the course so that's all for now thank you very much for watching and listening and I will see you later thank you